Welcome to the lecture series on process integration. In this lecture, we will discuss threshold problems. This is module 3, lecture number 5. Threshold problems only need a single thermal utility either hot or cold, but not both over a given range of minimum temperature difference that is delta T minimum ranging from 0 to a threshold temperature. So, this is the definition of a threshold problem. Why threshold problems are important to us? This is because they demand only a single thermal utility that may be hot utility or may be cold utility. If the problem demands only hot utility, I have to put a boiler in the industry and I do not have to put a cooling tower in the industry. So, we save either boiler or cooling tower in such problems. Now, to find out a problem whether it is threshold problem or not, generally we compute the utilities over a range of delta t minimum starting from 0 and generally we find that after a certain value of delta t minimum the problem starts demanding hot and cold utilities both, but before that it either demands hot utility or cold utility. That means that for every problem we should try to search whether the problem is a threshold problem or not. If we detect it to be a threshold problem, it can bring savings to the industry. Now, let us see in detail what is a threshold problem and how it is generated. Now, in figure A, we show here a threshold problem which needs only hot utility and the demand of cold utility is 0. Now, this is in B position of the cold composite curve that is when cold composite curve attains a position B, then the cold utility demand is 0 as shown by this the cold one end of the cold uh, one end of the composite cold matches with the end of the hot composite curve and hence demand of the cold utility is 0, whereas there is a demand of hot utility q h. Now, if we see here in this figure which is B, in this position A position of the composite cold curve, there is a demand of cold utility sorry hot utility q 1 and another hot utility q 2, where q 1 plus q 2 is q h. Now, when we shift it to the right hand side, a position comes when the cold utility demand is 0, however, there is a hot utility demand of q h. If we shift it further to a position c, then we find that there is a cold utility demand from this point to this point and that as well as there is a hot utility demand from this point to this point. Further, if I shift it to D position, there is a cold utility demand from here to here and there is a hot utility demand from this point to this point. Now, this can be represented, this movement can be represented here. Basically, when I am shifting the cold you uh, the composite cold curve from the hot composite curve, the delta t minimum is changing. In this case, the delta t minimum is almost 0 here, but when I shift to the b, this is the delta t minimum, when I shift to c, this is the delta t minimum, and maybe when we shift to d position, this will be the delta t minimum. So, here 
the hot utility and cold utilities are plotted with delta t minimum as a parameter in the x axis. So, we see that when the delta t minimum is changing from 0 to a certain value here up to here which is called the tree threshold the cold utility demand is 0, whereas the hot utility demand is fixed at q h. If delta t minimum is less than t threshold q h is equal to q 1 plus q 2, where q 1 and q 2 may vary but their summation q 1 and q 2 will remain constant at q h. So, the hot utility demand is fixed at q h up to the 3 t threshold point. When the delta t minimum is greater than t threshold, then we see that the cold utility demand as well as the hot utility demand increases. This is the line where we see the hot utility is increasing, here also the hot cold utility is increasing. It clearly indicates that, that if I am operating my hen in this zone that is below T threshold, if I am able to operate my heat exchanger network with delta t minimum which is less than t threshold, then I will be requiring only hot utility and no cold utility. This means that one has to put the boiler only for generation of the steam or a heater for the generation of hot water or hot oil to service the hot utility demand and he has not to go for any generation of cold utility using a cooling tower. So, a lot of saving can take place. Now, let us see the second case when hot utility is 0, but there is a demand of cold utility. This figure A shows that this is the composite hot curve and this is the composite cold curve this end of the composite hot curve matches with this end of the composite cold curve showing that there is no requirement of hot utility. However, there is a requirement of cold utility here which is given by Q c which is the difference between this point and this point vertical this point in the horizontal axis because this horizontal axis is delta h. So, this difference will give the demand of the cold utility. Now, if delta t m that is delta t minimum is changed, here we see that this curve is generated when we plot delta h versus delta t minimum. Up to this point where delta t minimum is equal to t threshold, the requirement of hot utility is 0, whereas the requirement of cold utility is there. This would be q c and q c is equal to q c 1 plus q c 2. After this t threshold, there will be a demand of cold utility as well as hot utility. So, if delta t minimum is less than t threshold, we are in this zone and when delta t minimum is greater than t threshold, we are in this zone. So, if the heat exchanger network is designed in such a fashion that it operates with delta t minimum less than t threshold, then in this case it will be requiring only cold utility and not hot utility and that to the amount of cold utility requirement will be equal to q c. 
So, in this case only one will require a cooling tower to supply the cold water and not a boiler to supply any hot utility for the utility heating. Now, this shows that at this point the hot utility demand is 0, but there is a cold utility demand of Q c when it shifts horizontally to this point then the cold utility demand here is Q c 2 and here this Q c 1 where Q c 1 plus Q c 2 is equal to Q c. One should observe this that these two cold utility demands are not at the same temperature. This it at Q c is at a higher temperature and this Q c 2 is at a lower temperature. So, it will be demanding two cold utilities at two different temperatures. Now, if I shift this to this point C, then what happens? There is a hot utility demand which will be given the, by the distance between this point and this point and the cold utility demand is from this point to this point. So, the hot utility em demand emerges out after it crosses T threshold and then the cold utility demand also increases. So, this clears a case when there is a hot utility demand and there is hot utility demand is 0 and there is a cold utility demand and when I am shifting the cold utility the cold composite curve to a different positions which marks different delta t minimum then how the cold utility amount and hot utility amount are changing and it very clearly shows that up to t threshold the cold utility demand remains constant whereas, the hot utility demand remains 0 and after T threshold both hot utility and cold utility demands grow and indicating that if we are able to operate the heat exchanger network below T threshold when the hot utility demand is 0 at T threshold, then we can save a lot. Now, we take a third case when there exists hot utility demand and cold utility demand as well. So, if I shift this cold utility cold composite curve towards this or away from this, this is how the cold utility demand will increase and hot utility demand will increase with delta t minimum. So, this is not a threshold problem because at t minimum delta t minimum equal to 0 even there is a demand of hot utility and there is a demand of cold utility and when delta t minimum increases from 0 onwards the cold utility demand and hot utility demand increases. That means, we will not have any zone of delta t minimum where either cold utility demand or hot utility demand will remain 0 and hence it is not a threshold problem. Now, let us see there are different types of threshold problems. Now, figure A shows this, this is a composite hot curve and this is a composite cold curve, but the distance between this two is minimum here at not non utility end, this is a non utility end because here the demand of hot utility is 0. So, this is a non utility end it is minimum here. In the same manner if we see here 
here the cold utility is 0, because the composite cold curves one end is matches with the composite hot curves the other end. So, here the demand of cold utility is 0 and the delta t minimum is minimum at this end. In this case, we see that the there is a cold utility demand and here the hot utility requirement is 0, but the delta t minimum at this end is not minimum, it is somewhere minimum at this point. Similarly, there can be case when there is a cold utility demand is 0 at this case, but the delta t minimum available here is not the minimum if I consider the value of delta t minimum which is varying from this to this, but there is a hot utility demand here. So, in the first I figure A and B, the closest temperature approach between the hot and cold composite is at the non utility end and the curves diverge from this point, whereas in the second type of problems that is figure C and D, there is an intermediate near pinch which can be identified from the composite curve as a reason of cold temperature, close temperature approach. Now, let us see what is the capital energy trade off for threshold problems. That means, how the cost changes for threshold problems, because finally, everything has to be converted into the cost or you can say total annual cost and a decision will be taken for the design of heat exchanger network, which will give minimum tag that is total annual cost. And you will see that at a particular delta t minimum or for a range of delta t minimum, the total annual cost remains minimum and hence the behavior of the cost in which may be capital cost or it may be operating cost or it is may be a mix of these two which the total annual cost. We will see that how this cost varies with delta t minimum. Now, this is the operating cost which changes from this point to this point and remains constant from this to this and obviously, this is the t threshold. Up to 3 t threshold, the utility demand remains constant whether it is a hot utility demand or a cold utility demand. So, the operating cost remains constant up to the t threshold and then it increases, but the fixed cost decreases when I increase the delta t minimum, I am providing more delta t that means, driving force and hence in general the area decreases for a constant heat transfer. So, once the area decreases with del increase in delta t minimum, the fixed cost decreases. So, we get a total cost figure like this, where minimum matches with the t threshold. This is one case, when optimum cost matches with the T delta T m threshold, there can be another case where it does not match. So, we go for the another case where the T operating cost moves like this, where this is the T threshold point 
and it remains constant up to t threshold point and then it increases as obviously we have seen and then the fixed cost decreases with delta t minimum the explanation is the same when delta t minimum which is the minimum driving force available in the heat exchanger network increases then the area decreases for a fixed value of q and a fixed value of u and when we combine these two costs then we get a total cost and this is the total cost figure but here the most important is that the minimum of the total cost figure does not match with the t threshold so it is greater than the t thresholds in the figure b shows that optimum is at optimum location is that delta t minimum is greater than t threshold that is optimum lies in a area where delta t minimum is greater than t threshold in this case there is a demand for both the utilities and thus the problem is a pinched problem so if we come across such problems at this point there is a demand of hot utility as well as cold utility because delta t minimum is greater than t threshold and thus this problem works as a pinched problem however in the upper case there is no pinch in this it's not a pinched problem and it can be noted that although threshold problems are common and these do not have a process pinch utility pinch can be introduced in such problems by the induction of multiple utilities now let us see this with problem so we take a four stream threshold problem given here there are two hot streams and two cold streams and the delta h is computed by multiplying the cp value with delta t values that means this cp values so 207 is computed by taking 1.8 as cp value this should be capital cp cp values and then multiply it with 155 minus 40 so this comes out to be 207 so for this problem when we plot our composite hot and composite curve cold we find that this end does not require hot utility so the hot liquidity is zero for this problem whereas there is a requirement of 239.5 kilowatt of cold utility and when we take delta t minimum is equal to 10 degree centigrade so at 10 degree centigrade this is a threshold problem now if we plot the demand of cold utility as well as hot utility as a function of delta t minimum so at a the y axis delta delta h and the x axis delta t minimum if we plot this and vary this delta t minimum and we have seen that at 10 degree centigrade when delta t minimum is equal to 10 degree centigrade there is a cold utility requirement and hot utility requirement is zero this is being shown here so when we change this we find that up to 36.7 degree centigrade the hot utility demand is zero and cold utility demand is fixed at 239.5 kilowatt after this temperature there is the demand of hot utility as well as cold utility increases 
and hence this problem clearly states that the T threshold is 36.7 degree centigrade. Now, we take another problem which is also a four stream problem to find out what is the T threshold value. Here this problem clearly shows when we plot the composite hot and composite cold that the cold utility demand is 0. However, there is a hot utility demand of 267 kilowatt and this happens when delta T minimum is equal to 10 degree centigrade. Now, to find out the value of T threshold, we have to plot this curve several times with different delta T minimum. Here is the, the vertical distance is delta T minimum here. So, by shifting this curve right hand side or left hand side parallel to this axis, we can generate the hot utility requirement and cold utility requirement. And if we do so and plot the hot utility requirement and cold utility requirement at different delta T minimums, we can generate this plot which is between delta H and delta T minimum. Here we see that when delta T minimum changes from 0 to say 51.5 degree centigrade up to this, the cold utility demand R 0 where the hot utility demand is fixed at 267 kilowatt. This clearly tells that if the hen is designed in such a way that delta T minimum is within 51.5 degree centigrade, then it will be requiring only hot utility and no cold utility. The delta T minimum figure of 51.5 degree centigrade is a very high figure and most of the heat exchanger networks can be designed within this delta T minimum. So, we should try to design the heat exchanger network within this region and we should not go to this region because this will increase our operating cost by demanding hot as well as cold utility. And for this purpose, we have to either purchase the cold utility from outside or we have to keep cooling towers which will increase our fixed cost as well as operating cost. So, it is advisable to design the hen within this limit. So, when we plot this it clearly tells that my T threshold temperature is 51.5 degree centigrade. These are the references and thank you.